and ready to roll. So you guys, um, who's the, got the video? Oh yeah. Is it you? Yeah. He's going to video. Yeah, can you, there you go. So, um, Thanks we'll start hand sanitizer real quick. Yeah. Can you grab me a hand sanitizer? I have some. Sorry. I've just been touching all those players. Perfect. Before I take my mask off. Yeah, we got some. Thank you. Okay. All right, guys. Um, we'll start with an opening statement from Coach following tonight's win over South Carolina. And then, as always, get your hands raised, and we'll get you in the queue to ask questions. So as soon as Coach is ready to settle in here, we'll let him deliver his opening statement. So, Coach, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I can't be any more proud of our football team, the fight they displayed, the the toughness they showed, you know, to have 52 scholarship players available and play the game. You know, I know we traveled 56, but we knew Jeff Coat was going to be out. We knew that Del X, Larry, and, and um, uh, Kobe were going to be out. And, and to, to still find a way to win, you know, defense played lights out. We knew Coach Walters was going to be here. Tip of our hat to our defensive staff, especially Coach Gibbs, just called an excellent game. Um, just just really an awesome performance all the way around. Obviously, we didn't do uh, what we needed to do offensively in the second half to put the game away. But, uh, you know, we found a way to win, and that's what you have to do. Um, special teams did a great job flipping the field. And so, hey, we're going home three and three, and, and uh, that, really proud of our team right now. We'll start with a question from Peter Baugh from The Athletic. Peter, go ahead. He wants clear. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, what uh, I guess – does it say about your defense that without Walters and with a lot of, I guess, the numbers both on the defensive line and in the secondary that you guys were able to kind of really contain South Carolina's offense that had success last week? Yeah, I mean, it just – it's hats off to them for just being focused and um, doing their jobs and, and executing and stepping up to the challenge. Next one comes from Bennett Durando from the St. Louis Post. Bennett. Eli, I, I know in, in your halftime interview with the SEC Network, you said you guys need a turnover, need to force a turnover to win. Um, what did you – what was sort of your interaction with Devin after the game, and uh, what did you tell him about that interception? Uh, great job. Uh, last time I saw Devin, he was running around the turnover robe. Um, so – you know, tremendous job. Coach uh, Smith does drop school for the linebackers every day, every Wednesday after practice and showed up right there, did an excellent job. Coach Gibbs said on that last drive, I got on their headset and said, sorry, coach. And he said, don't worry about it. We're going to get a turnover right here. And he did. Jack Sobel from the Maneater. Jack. Coach, you guys had your first two and a half sacks by defensive backs this season, uh, especially with Trajan, your leading sack guy out. Was that part of the game plan to bring those secondary guys on blitzes today? Uh, yeah. Yep, yep. Thought we would uh, incorporate some different ways to get pressure on the quarterback, and, and and we did. Mitchell Forty from Power Mizzou. Mitch. Eli, how much does, you know, the defense and, and how they're kind of playing factor into your decisions to call plays and, and, and go for it versus punt on fourth down on, on South Carolina's side of the field, especially in the second half? Um, I mean, it gives you a lot of confidence knowing that they're able to, to put things away. You know, I tried to tried to end the game on that little uh, wheel route at the end, and, and, and I had confidence that uh, you know if we didn't get it, we were going to be able to punt them deep, and the defense was going to hold them. But so, yep. Kyle Pennell from the Man Eater. Kyle. Yeah, coach, you guys haven't played in a few weeks, and um, how do you feel like your team dealt with that rust and just finally getting the play for the first time since Halloween? Yeah, I mean, I think you could tell offensive line wise we're we're not where we need to be, and I think we're still just working on you know we gotta we gotta create some holes, and and they did a good job with our counter scheme tonight, and um, uh, but for the most part our ball handling was pretty clean, and and our tackling was pretty good, except you know when they slipped in that other quarterback, you know Doty, I thought did a nice job of of eluding some tackles, um, but for the most part, I mean, we did what we needed to do. Gabe Diarman, Power Mizzou, go ahead, Gabe. Yeah, Eli, when you say confidence allows you to punt, I, I imagine that grows when you've got a guy that stuck him, I think, at the 12-yard line the first time and then at the one. Just how important in a game like that was what Grant did for you late? I mean, he's that's why you're recruiting. That's why you get him here and you, and you beg him to come back for next year too um, because he's got a lot of leadership. He's been in these games a long time, and, um, you know, he does a great job with, with, with his timing and holding the ball and – I mean, there's just no no substitute for experience right there. Dave Matter from the Post. Dave, go ahead. Eli, you've, you've talked a lot this year about 
both sides kind of complimenting each other. I mean, how, how did that come to fruition tonight? I mean, when your offense is kind of sputtering and the defense makes some plays, I mean, what, what's that say about how this team is kind of coming together? Yeah, I think it's – they're not blaming each other. They're just – they're working and, and, and encouraging each other. I think showed up after the turnover in the first half. Our defense went out there, went three and out, forced a TFL. We called the timeout. And then, uh, you know, we were able to get the ball back and drive down for a field goal right before half. So, obviously, that was big for us and, and just proves complimentary football. Eric Blum from the Tribune. Eli, how much did you expect to see of Luke Doty tonight? And uh, what changed when he took over for Colin Hill? Uh, I don't know that we were expecting or not expecting him to come in. Obviously, they went uh, a lot more to their spread attack and, and uh, you know, a little bit more quarterback run instead of their 21 personnel toss game to 20. Andrew Kaufman. Hey, Coach, just to be 3-3 three and three with all the obstacles that you guys have faced and being a first-year head coach, just uh, what, what do you think of that in a conference-only schedule to, to be 3-3? Three and three? Well, I've got a couple of screenshots of people that predicted us to only win two games, so they can they can have those screenshots back. And, um, you know, I think that for me is the biggest thing is, you know, just for our team having a chip on their shoulder, people counting us out before we even got to the fight. And there's no quit in us. You know, we have 52 play scholarship players, man. I mean, that's, that's a 1AA roster right now. And our guys are fighting and giving everything you got. Nick Bolton's playing every snap. Um, you know, our D line's giving us everything out. We started two true freshmen at corner tonight. And uh, to be where we're at, it's a tribute to our players, it's a tribute to our seniors, and a tribute to our staff um, for just fighting. Fighting. So, Uchi. Eli, um, just, just wondering, what, what did you see out of that second half from your offense? What, what was maybe kind of the cause of some, some of those struggles? Couldn't run the ball. I mean, we, quite honestly, we couldn't run the ball, and we weren't very effective on third down because our pass rush, you know, their pass rush was was pressuring the quarterback. So we'll have to go back and look at it and and uh, figure out where we got to adjust. Jack Sobel. Coach, you touched on this a bit, but uh, when did you know that Coach Gibbs would be calling plays this weekend? What 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 specifically do you think he did well tonight? Um, I think Ryan gets out of quarantine Monday, so I've known about. 13 days uh, we've planned on it. We, we had the plan for next week too. Surprise, none of y'all knew. But uh, uh, he did a great job of just staying calm, calling the defense, being able to handle uh, run adjustments, pass adjustments, subbing in personnel, matching personnel, matching when they're in 21, matching when they were in 10. I thought he dialed up some great pressures, mixed up zone and man. I mean, crud, he held them to 10 points. He did everything good. Uh, Pete Acabelli. Eli, how close did this game come to not being played because of your uh, roster numbers, and how hard did you guys work to make sure that you could get it played? Uh, I mean, we wanted to play no matter what, uh, as long as we didn't have something from a medical standpoint that we would have considered it to be an outbreak. We were going to play. Just felt like our guys had been working way too hard to not play a game, um, and so. You know, I think we only flew 65 guys down here. They give you 70, but we only brought 65. And so we're running low, but we felt like it was important to give our guys an opportunity to play. Peter Baugh. Yeah, Eli, Larry finally passed the, the record for most yards by a running back. Just overall, having him, a stable guy like him coming in as a, as a new coach, what has he meant to you and, and your team? Well, I mean, he's a captain, so the first thing he means is that it means he's get, got the respect of his teammates. And, you know, core value for us is build trust and respect. And felt like we've worked really hard to just build trust with – can somebody mute their – Hey, guys, we've got a, somebody on there. I think it's Pete. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, and, and so, you know, he, he has a lot of trust and respect, and he's just an outstanding person. He's got great work ethic. And, um, you know, to have complimentary guys like Larry Roundtree and Nick Bolton on the offense and defensive side, it's um, – it, it, for me in this job, it makes, you know, it makes, uh, makes all the difference. You know, it makes all the difference. Those two guys hold this team together. Um, they make sure we play hard. They make sure we practice hard. Um, they have the respect of every coach I talk to in this conference. Every time I shake somebody's hands at midfield, they all want to know if those two guys have COVID because if they're playing, they know they're in for a dogfight all day. And um, so really proud of both of them. Bill Pollock, go ahead. 
Yeah, and Coach, just talk about the challenge of reacting on the fly to when a team changes their offensive scheme and then just how impressive that is for your defensive players to step up and counter that. Yeah, that's why you have base rules and that's why you have experienced defensive players and experienced play callers. We kind of figured, you know, what we were going to do. I thought Coach Haley made a great adjustment to cage the quarterback and not letting him get out of the pocket. And, and uh, yeah, we did a nice job. Max Baker. Yeah, what was what was the biggest change, I guess, in your defensive game plan um, after Shy got hurt, I guess, five, six plays into the game? Um, nothing. Dave Matter. Dave Matter. Was Jeff, yeah, was Jeff Coat, was that a game time decision? Or was he close to being able cleared or not? He was ruled out last night. Um, we had a, we had, a, I mean, we, we were about 98% sure he was going to be out, but then last night he was definitely ruled out. So Jack Sobel, go ahead. Coach, I'm wondering, based on your initial impressions tonight, what are some things that you, that you want to see Connor improve on for next week? I have no idea. I hadn't watched the tape, but as soon as I do, I'll be critical. I know right before half, he can't throw the swing route when there's, 13 seconds left he's got to wait and had both slicers open for a touchdown so I mean I know that one right off the top of my head but other than that I don't know oh yeah you can't throw an interception in the red zone under throw the ball I mean balls on the 23 yard line you threw it to the two I mean that's a pretty terrible throw so we got those two things are correct all right we'll let coach go with that one we got Nick Bolton here so thanks